Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and today I wanted to, to talk and shoot this quick video on something that affects the gastrointestinal system called hypochlorhydria, or low stomach acid. I also want to talk about some of the common problems uh, that you can determine uh, in, in the sense that if you suspect low stomach acid levels. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is really the far-reaching effects that low stomach acid will have on many areas of your health outside of the GI system. So, most people with heartburn or GERDs or acid reflux or abdominal bloating and cramping have really no idea that the symptoms that they're experiencing are more often the result of a lack of stomach acid and really not an excess of stomach acid like most often they're told, okay? Many people mistakenly believe that these symptoms are, are really caused by too much acid and so many of them are taking over-the-counter antacids on a daily basis or they're taking a prescription acid blocker such as proton pump inhibitors. And if you're doing this, I want you to realize that this decision of reducing the stomach acid can and absolutely will have a devastating consequence to your health and to the entire digestive terrain, okay? So what I wanna do here is just give you 10 of the most common symptoms that we see with people that have low stomach acid. You might be experiencing them, you might be able to relate to them, but here they are. One is bloating, okay? Um, gas, especially after meals. A sense of fullness or abdominal tightness. Um, obviously, the heartburn and the acid reflux and indigestion is a sign of low stomach acid. Um, should you see undigested food in your stool passage, okay, that's another sign that you're not having or breaking down uh, these foods properly due to low stomach acid. But uh, things like constipation, uh, cramping, foul-smelling foul gas, and yes, even bad breath can be related to low stomach acid, okay? So how do you identify low uh, hydrochloric acid or, or what we call hydrochloric acid insufficiency, okay? Well, one, it can be assessed directly, but it can also be assessed indirectly. Indirectly, obviously, those symptoms that we just, uh, you know, talked about, there's a correlation of those symptoms. And directly, by looking at certain things in your laboratory markers in blood testing, but you can also look at your, um, have your urine tested for something called urinary indicin, okay? On a blood test, one of the most obvious signs of low stomach acid is a chloride level less than 100, okay? Uh, it really needs to be pointed out here that other factors should be evaluated, things like total globulin, okay? Uh, bicarbonate, blood urea nitrogen, or, or BUN, okay, you'll see that on your blood work. Something called an anion gap, and then something called your mean corpuscular volume or your MCV. You'll usually on your blood work, if you're looking at your blood work, you'll see your MCV, your MCH, and your MCHC all kind of together. Um, it's very important to, to point out here and, and repeat that a lack of stomach acid really does have far-reaching effects which extend far beyond the digestive system. And, and here, here are a couple things that are important that I want you to understand. Number one is that studies conduct, conducted on users of proton pump inhibitor medications have actually shown that antacids cause osteoporosis, okay? Uh, it's also been shown that they increase the risk of bone fractures. And there's also many studies that show they actually uh, increase something called bacterial overgrowth. And this is so important for, for individuals that, that I work with that have irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Uh, other problems associated with these proton pump inhibitors is, is the obvious, impaired nutrient absorption. Uh, decreased resistance to infections, and then also an increased risk of cancer and other diseases. I, I guarantee you that the vast majority of people don't know that proton pump inhibitors have been linked to cancer, okay? So very, very important. Now, at the end of this video, I'm gonna put some links showing you this research so that you can read these on your own, come to your own conclusion, and then decide whether or not you wanna take these, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this short video. This is gonna be one video of several videos that I put together um, to kind of help increase and, and further your understanding of just how important good stomach digestion really is and its dependency on good hydrochloric acid, okay? Well, hope you enjoyed this short video. Take care.